Our story begins with a lady called MacDonald on a distant planet. She was a refugee fleeing from political corruption and persecution as she was fleeing with thoughts of dying out of dehydration and starvation. She stumbled across an area which was obviously habited once, but something far beyond terror happened here as she walked through the fields in front of the house. She found multiple bodies. As she stepped into the burned-out building and found destroyed equipment, very various strange things inside, and the smell of death, she found a body of a doctor called Dr. Cox, and she found a journal on her. She checked out every room, and then she stepped outside to flip through the pages of the journal she had found, and with disbelief she started reading what actually happened. Day one, the journal said. My name is Dr. Cox, and we survived the terrible explosion on our mothership. Me and two others stepped into a stepped into escape pods and were able to escape the terroring the terrible inferno that is still occurring up on the orbit of this for us unknown planet. We immediately started thinking we need to build electricity, so we in that night still build a geothermic generator out of the pieces that fell from the sky along with us. And yes, it all went well until Butch, one of the survivors, thought it would be a good idea to kill one of the buffalo in order to eat them, because he was starving. On the contrary, he was bit and injured viciously by this wild animal, and he fell into a coma. We tried doing anything, but we couldn't do anything, as all our equipment was non-existent. We had no medical supplies we could treat him with. So, needless to say, he succumbed to his injuries and died painfully in a coma without us being able to do anything. Without further ado, the other colleague and I thought it would be an excellent idea to build refuge, which was because it turns out the weird buffalo here are strangely aggressive, and they started destroying our building. So we dealt with that. As we were building out our building, we saw someone walk across the landscape, and we took the liberty to take him prisoner. As we thought, Lydia and I, we thought it would be a good idea to have a male companionship here, or a male slave at least, for the time being. And yes, it was a good idea. And not too much later we found another person, Dickerson a space pirate, as she claimed, and she became our prisoner as well, and we started treating them well, but soon enough we would stumble across other problems. We thought it would be a good idea to build some kind of communications relay system in order to communicate with passing on travelers, as it were, maybe, and indeed we did so, which was until now not a problem. It was only until one of the buffalo of the herd nearby entered our premises and started wreaking havoc. I immediately came to assist, but got injured terribly. And Lydia came to help as well, of course. She stumbled, she wanted to help me. She wanted to do something, but failed miserably. The buffalo kicked and screamed, Dickerson also heroically tried to help us, and as she carried me to my bed heavily injured, the buffalo got rid of Lydia. And Dickerson remains the hero of this part. I could see that my injuries were going to be fatal, so I asked Dickerson to keep on writing this journal as soon as I perished. This shall be my last log, Dr. Cox signing out. So yeah, um, my name is uh, Dickerson. Um, yeah, see, this is kind of a weird situation. The doctor, um, 
she asked me to keep on writing this journal, which I don't know how to, and um, Lydia is also down, and she hasn't woken up since the attack, so I'm kind of uh, nervous here what to do. Um, also, we have a new problem. Um, there have been traders coming by and asking for stuff. They've even asked if we would buy, sell Ferguson. The problem is Ferguson is in a cell and he can't get out. Yes, it is, uh, the point. The thing is, Lydia had all the codes and all the keys and all the knowledge to uh, what happens to uh, Ferguson, and the way to give him food has also been eliminated this way as again Lydia was the only person who knew how and uh, not how but the codes yes so again Dr. Cox asked me uh, to write this I don't know I think she's still uh, alive I am hoping for her to wake up really soon and we'll be having uh, breakfast with delicious paste again and Ferguson will survive his screams are making me nervous This is Dickerson. In the end, uh, I'm afraid Lydia and Dr. Cox have perished. They have died. I have touched their necks and they have no pulse. And this has been quite a while now. Ferguson is absolutely going bananas behind the cell as he knows he's going to die as there is no way of getting into his cell and giving him food. So that is kind of disturbing. Also, there have been solar flares obviously occurring or something. I don't know. Something is wrong with the equipment. Everything is out. I'm sitting on it at all the time. It's dark in here. So, I don't know. I have checked the, the walls and the things, but everything seems to be straight. So, it must be a solar So, it uh, seems awfully quiet now. Uh, the door behind Ferguson's wall is basically absolutely silent. I think Ferguson has died and uh, that uh, just lets just leaves me. I've been trying to fix some things here and I've started to make you know graves. I'm gonna put away the corpses as they're starting to stink up the place but uh, nevertheless uh, yeah I'm gonna do my best. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try and keep on. I've learned a lot of growing, so I'm going to keep on doing that as it keeps me alive. So this is Ferguson signing off, I guess. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? God damn it. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, it, is e it is late in the night. It is, it is late in the evening, and I just saw a guy not too far away from here. Dude, there was a guy walking around in circles, laughing into himself and saying, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. I'm freaked out. I only have a gun. I only have a gun here. Dr. Cox's gun. I still have it. But, 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 oh my God, I'm so afraid. I don't know what to do. I uh, installed the uh, turret outside a few days ago, so that should keep me uh, safe by now. So I'm going to try to go and sleep. Good night. Bye. So I finally got some sleep, and I was terribly woken up by my machine gun outside of my house and of course as I heard this I realized I must be in danger I tried to run outside but oh my god there was a guy throwing Molotov cocktails and oh my god I tried to get in front of him and shoot him but he threw a Molotov cocktail right into my face it exploded right next behind me it oh my god I was on fire for like too long I ran outside the house in panic, trying. I thought it was raining outside, but it wasn't, and I just ran ac across the block in panic because it was burning, and I could feel the fire f eating through my flesh, and it was just horrifying. I did not know what to do. I ran back to see if my turret did something, but no, he did not do anything. He did not do enough, at least. Everything was on fire. I was running back and forth, trying to extinguish the flames with air but then I thought air actually makes flames stronger and then I saw the outer turret the outer turret killed him oh the outer turret killed him oh my god and it started to rain oh bless me thank you thank you thank you oh my god oh my god oh yes the rain fell over my body and it just oh it hurt so much I was in terrifying pain in terrifying pain this was not to be 
I cannot explain to you. I actually ran inside the house again to see if I could save something, but the pain was so overwhelming I could not do anything. I could not do anything, literally. I could just stand there in agony and think to myself, oh my God, I'm so near death. I just sat in my room and waited for the flames to turn on, to go off. I nearly fell into a something. I nearly dozed off. The pain was just absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. And to top it all off, some disease spread over my crops and killed everything. Yay. So I went to fix stuff and there was a rat outside or some type of thing and it bit me. It actually bit me and immediately I fell to my knees. I couldn't move my legs anymore and I just fell to the ground. I'm basically in front of the house right now and uh, I still have the pen and paper to write the journal. Uh, but I, uh, I'm not sure what to say and write anymore as I feel it's getting darker and, uh, I think, uh, uh, I, th I think life is leaving me right now. Well, in my last words, I'd like to say, please bury the bodies. They were really good people, except the commissioner who came and burned down the place feed him to the rats if all I care but Dr. Cox's work must go on it would benefit the entire world and if not the entire universe and with my last energy I'll write down the brilliant equation that Dr. Cox studied all her life <laughs> equation is <coughs> poor old MacDonald she was feeling rather sick to her stomach she thought to herself worry not Dickerson you were a pirate and yet you became a noble hero you saved two doctors and you tried to save the other guy but well, whoa, that almost hit me. What a good omen to start my life here. I'm going to start fixing this wall, she thought, and started fixing the wall. What adventures would await for her here? Nobody knew. Nobody knew. And I thank you for watching very much. <laughs> I enjoyed a lot making this video, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. My name is Juan Enrique. Bye-bye.